Hey, everyone. Wow, actually, there's more people than I expected. <laughs> so, hey, uh, my name is Alan, Alan Chang. Uh, I'm from Quanta QCT. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the new stuff that we're offering in this year. Right? So, a little bit of commercial time. Let me try it. All right. So uh, we have three sessions, and the first one is going to be talk this one, and we're going to want to talk about the, the new generation stuff that we have on the Open Rack and the Project Olympus. And the second session is, um, I will feel like it's a little bit more interesting, is 345 today, and we want to talk about some of the OCP adoption into EIA, right? Um, everyone has co-location, so I do believe um, there's a need for a co-location EIA 19 inch flavor. Um, adopting some of the building blocks that are happening right here. So the last one we also have is tomorrow at 9.30. We want to talk about Quanta and the Project Olympus involvement and then allow you to have a, a little bit more deep dive uh, with Microsoft and, and Quanta QCD together, right? So um, first thing first, um, this is actually the sixth year I'm being with uh, OCP, for, um, OCP Summit. So every year I add a little bit Lego building blocks on top of it, and then it looks like the building blocks is actually growing bigger and bigger. So this year we do talk about the ORV2, Open Rack V2 refresh, and then there's gonna be Project Olympus systems that we are trying to adapt into uh, various form factors and all the solutions and also force, right? So um, what do we learn from the past year is pretty amazing. That's the good list way, right? So um, we have been working with Facebook for quite some time on the open rack and then Project Olympus. And then obviously there's a new trend of um, the ch Chinese tel co companies actually joining the OCP, the Alibaba, the Baidu, and Tencent. They all have a lot of things in common, right? On the data center fabric that they have in the front. And then we do feel like that's the trend. And when we're talking a lot of, to a lot of customers, they start asking the question why they were doing that. And then we do have various good reasons, and I will talk about that in the second session. So you should come back at 3.45, right? So what I want to talk about is we've been working with all these customers. We have the richest building blocks, right, uh, among all the uh, vendors out there. We have the compute, we have the storage, we also have the GPU accelerating parts. So we feel like we should use these blocks and building something unique and that you can adapt right away instead of just looking at these beautiful building blocks and then saying, oh, but the first thing I have to do is actually choosing either it's an it's a, it's a open rack or should I choose a Project Olympus. When you have too much choices, uh, it, it kind of dilemma and put a dilemma in your mind and then you start having a hard time um, choosing one way or the other because you, you don't want to get left alone, right? So, but let me, using this session, kind of talk about what um, offering uh, we have in Open Compute ORV2. Obviously, the first one is the Tiago Pass. Uh, it's a Facebook project. It's a refresh on the Intel Xeon scalable processor. It has the same triplet design, and this one is just one of the triplet. And then you have all three of this right here, right, in a very uh, compact and very, um, very unique, flexible way. So why do I say it's flexible? Because when I see this, I see a 20 inch box, 21 inch box, right? A, 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 just a simple box. But when you plug in different flavors of things, you can actually change the dynamic of how you, your application can actually use this particular slot. So we do have what we call the Tiago Pass right here. And then underneath right here, they have a Xeon D, Intel Xeon D processor for some sort of lower workflow kind of applications. And underneath right there, we're using the same building blocks and create some sort of NVMe uh, kind of tray, allowing you to have an NVMe, external NVMe that's sitting very close to the compute. So you have three slots and we have three different building blocks. It just happened to be a coincidence, right? You, you don't have to mix and match and the way that we have but obviously you can actually have very different ways of doing it. So we just want to use this as a concept, allowing our customer or talk to, uh, when we talk to our customer, they have ideas, we make it happen, right? We just want to make it happen for our customer with the different ways of their workload, their data center environment required. So that's one of the refresh that we have done. So Facebook also talk about Yosemite V2. So compared to the V1, this is very completely different. It's like a re-engineer on literally everything on their V1 concept. 
So as you can see, they divide this into four different sessions and four different sessions has like different blades inside of it. And then let me take a look at one of the blade options right here, right? So when you took one of the blades out, you have four different slots. You can plug in all, again, different things, right? So um, four times four, that's 16. So in a 4U box, you have 16 slots of whatever you want to plug in in every different way. So let me show you the building blocks, right? On the very left-hand side, it's actually a Xeon D processor motherboard. It's very tiny, right? And then it has uh, plenty of memory slots and it's an SOC. It has a very special heat sink and it actually can be plugged in into one of the slots. So you can actually have 16 of this in a 4U. And then in the middle, as you can imagine, everyone is talking about M.2, uh, a very low cost uh, media for uh, storage, but very fast also at the same time. So we do have a blade that actually can take in a lot of M.2s as one of the storage options. And then allowing, again, like uh, the storage very close to the compute, but you can have a different ratio of how many storage you need, how many compute you need, and just a combination of things that depends on your workload, depends on your applications. And we also have a very, on the very right hand side right here on the picture, it is a, a, a NIC, uh, I'll, I'll call it a PCI slot expansion, right? Remember I say we have 16 in a 4U, but imagine you have different acceleration cards that you want to plug in into it. You can actually plug in a NIC card, you can plug in a, a different cards of your choice, a FPGA or anything like that, right? So this will be a very flexible design on every different angles. And I have more detail on how this modules looks like right here. So that will be a Xeon D right there uh, with a six point inch tall, about 8.2 inch wide uh, in terms of dimension. And that's the dimension we created for ourselves and with the Facebook and to make sure we can actually have different flavor of things. So that become like a standard and whatever dimension um, of things that we can actually put it in, it could be possibly be be one of the module options in the future, right? And you have plenty of M.2 in the back in, the, in this particular compute. So allowing to actually add some storage on the, on the compute side of it. So you also have M.2 module right here, and then a NIC or a PCI expansion slot module right there for your plenty of stuff happening, okay? So with enough on the compute, so we also refresh our Big Surf uh, with a Xeon scalable processor. Um, if we just want to refresh a motherboard, that will be simply easy. But since we have the opportunity to actually refresh the motherboard, we, we, we take a look at the Big Surf, original Big Surf again, and see if there's anything else that we can improve, right? So we have a different fan dock uh, from the obvious part of it to increase the thermal behavior and the airflow how everything was actually from the cold air to the back and how the airflow was actually passing through. So there's obviously things like we remove some of the storage also from the original Big Serve and then make it like very competitive um, in the second generation. So this will be another look of it. And it has two Xeon processor and then four onboard PCI slots, a dual slot PCIe and 24 memory. The last um, big serve, I believe, is 16 DIMMs only. This big serve is actually a 24 DIMM slot uh, motherboard. So think about this way. When we introduced the first original big serve, we have the concept of saying, hey, let's disaggregate the motherboard from the PCIe board, right? So you can upgrade it with motherboard uh, independently, and then you can upgrade the motherboard on the time you want it, rather than throwing away the entire module altogether. So since they are independently built, so imagine if you have a PCI Gen 4 in the future or a baseboard or modules that you want to plug in, you can actually have a PCI Gen 4 module in the back without throwing away the motherboard. We do have a demo motherboard on a POC on a PCI Gen 4 based uh, stuff. As you can see, the, uh, the peripheral device is not ready yet, so it's just a POC stage at this given point of time. But imagine the possibility is really, really there. All right, so that's the PCI version of it, right? So in the big basin, as you we know, NVIDIA introduced the V100, and this year, or actually last year, so we do also did a refresh on the big basin on the V100 modules. So this will be the same exact uh, platform, 
we, when we design the Big Basin, we actually have the V100 in mind. So as you can imagine, it's technically the same exactly hardware in terms of the ordering part numbers, in terms of uh, how the everything was looked like. The only thing you have to change is actually buy new module from NVIDIA, right? So yeah, they made more money out of it and we, we, we keep using the same hardware, okay? So uh, this will be another introduction on the Big Basin, just in case you haven't or you have not seen about it. And there's a couple of the PCI slot right there, and that's where you plug in what we call a retimer, PCI retimer, and then you connect it to the host. Um, it is supposed to be Tiago Pass, but of course you can actually plug in a different, different modules if you want. So um, this will be some of the top look of the Big Basin. There's a SM2 module all connected through MVLink. And then there's, on, there's no motherboard in this particular design because we feel like, hey, um, throwing a motherboard in here will be creating a lot of more complexity into the system. And then we just use an external cable to actually connect it to Tiago Pass, okay? So uh, the last one, um, so last one for this session is actually just wanna talk about the, the coming section, which is happening in 345 is how do we take some of the Microsoft project stuff and then make it happen for EIA also, right? So hopefully you have um, enough information on what I talk about on the ORV2. And if you have additional interest on the open, um, open compute project on the Project Olympus, please come back at 345 and see if you have more questions, all right? And I guess I'm okay on time, so I can take any questions, I guess. No questions? All right, I'll stick around. So just in case you have questions, let me know. And um, we have a booth at A31 right there. And we have all the demos right there also, just in case you want to touch it and play with it. And then let us know. All right, we have salespeople over there too. All right, thank you.